Hey guys, Mike Semsky here with Washington Home Solutions. This is the follow-up video series for the Saturday seminar that we did on buying foreclosures with clarity. As you remember, I spoke on selling homes with lease purchase and I didn't quite have enough time to really get into too much detail about uh, the process of a lease purchase, uh, some more, more of the benefits, kind of how things work. And so this is my chance to be able to educate you a little bit more on how I sell homes on lease purchase, uh, some of those benefits, and uh, hopefully to answer some questions that you will have. So each one of these videos is going to have to be under 10 minutes in length, as that's is the most I'm able to upload to YouTube. And so this first video is going to be somewhat of a refresh of what we talked about before. And then um, I'm going to also throw in some additional uh, details and, and some more information about the uh, lease purchase process. So after this video is done, I really encourage you to send me an email if you have additional questions because my goal is to be able to, over the next several days and maybe week or two, as I release these videos, to be able to answer some of those questions that you have. So I actually decided to make this as we go. That way I can stay up to date with uh, the feedback I'm getting from you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. So selling a house with a lease purchase. Like I mentioned before, it's also known as the fastest, easiest way to market a house for top dollar and maximum cash flow, especially in a slow market, without the headaches normally associated with being a landlord. So this is a great time for lease purchase, and I'll show you why. Uh, first off, what is a lease purchase? It's going to be where someone rents your property today with the option to purchase it sometime in the future. So most of the people that are looking for a lease purchase, they have some reason why they cannot qualify for a loan. Uh, it doesn't have to be because they have bad credit, but often it is. Uh, other reasons they might not be able to qualify is maybe they haven't been in their job for a two full years that's needed. Uh, they could be self-employed. They might not have the minimum required down payment to move in, let's say 3.5% for an FHA loan. There's a lot of reasons, but there's a lot of people out there now that, that are looking for them. Uh, the sales price, monthly payment, and terms are all determined up front. So a lease purchase is good for you know, anyone who wants the benefits of a long-term hold without the hassles of being a landlord. It's because tenants are responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the property. Uh, they're more likely to pay on time because they have an ownership interest in the home. There's a lot of reasons uh, that a lease purchase is going to be a lot easier than a rental. <clears throat> also, it's also good for solving problems. So if you have a hard to sell home, you know, property that is just not selling on the open market, uh, or a home with little or no equity, if, if you aren't able to discount the price of your home or pay a real estate agent commission because you don't have enough equity, lease purchase is um, often very good for those situations. And a home that's difficult to cash flow with just, just rent. Because you're able to get more money for a lease purchase, uh, if you are on that fine line between having a $100 or $200 negative cash flow with a rental, you can often turn that into a break-even or positive cash flow with a lease purchase. Okay, advantage is selling with a lease purchase. So shorter time on market with higher sales price. It's all about supply and demand. And I'm going to have a great slide that's going to illustrate that. But Selling today with a lease purchase, you're able to find a tenant in a matter of days or weeks rather than months. Now you're also going to get a better quality tenant because uh, lease purchase tenants will have an ownership mentality. They've got an ownership interest in the home, so they're going to want to take care of it. Uh, they're less likely to, to be delinquent on rent, more likely to take care of the home. And the rent you get will be higher than market rental income. That's because usually you're asking for anywhere from two to three hundred dollars a month more than rent because you're ultimately going to be crediting that back to the tenant uh, as a purchase credit. Uh, noted day-to-day -day maintenance or repairs. Again, tenants are responsible for all the day-to-day -day maintenance repairs. If the faucet leaks or the toilet's clogged, you know, you're not the one that's going to get in the phone call. They have to take care of that on their own dime. So Fewer management headaches. They pay on time, or they're more likely to pay on time. Uh, they take care of the house, so you don't have those calls in the middle of the night that you might get if you're just a landlord. 
Also tax advantages. So if you're otherwise going to flip a property and have to pay short-term capital gains, uh, with lease purchase you get all the tax advantages that you're entitled to uh, as a, as a long-term uh, passive income property. So you get to take depreciation. If you're holding the property for more than a year, you're going to have uh, long-term capital gains. A lot of good tax advantages to selling on lease purchase. And of course, higher profits. If you're able to sell for a higher price with fewer uh, marketing costs, then of course you're able to make more money. So this is the supply demand. Right now, if you take a look at the number of homes for sale, here's a good illustration. We've got a lot of properties that are available for sale on the MLS. But homes for lease purchase, there's not nearly as many. On the other hand, when you look at qualified buyers, there's relatively few qualified buyers because the mortgage market has tightened up considerably. On the other hand, you have a quite a few qualified tenant buyers. So these are folks that can't own a home but want to, and uh, maybe their credit score isn't uh, good enough to get a loan, but they, it is good enough that within the next one to three years they could qualify. So because you flip the the uh, you flip the odds in your favor when you sell and lease purchase because you've got very few competition from other sellers and a lot of buyers. So determining price and terms, the sales price you want to put in the upper end of the comps, uh, or you can put in the upper end of the comps. You, you don't have as much negotiating that you need to do. Your monthly payment, two to three hundred dollars higher than market rent. Monthly purchase credit, you usually get a credit that back to the tenant buyer. Uh, when they purchase the property and as those monthly purchase credits I only give them when they pay on time so they're also going to pay an upfront option fee and that's generally one to two percent of the sales price some people try to ask for more but I find one to two percent is that sweet spot that allows me to fill the properties quickly yet still gives the, the tenant have them put enough skin in the game to uh, give them incentive to buy and then the length of lease anywhere from one to four years. Uh, for the paperwork, so one of the things that people make mistake of if they is they use a single lease with option to buy form. You never want to do that. You always want to have your rental agreement separate from the option and purchase agreement because if they ever default and if you had to bring your lease with the option to buy form or a single document to the judge, uh, they may determine that your tenant has uh, equitable title in the property where they may make you foreclose instead of evict. So I always do three separate agreements, a rental agreement, option agreement, purchase agreement. If they default on the on the rental agreement, the option and the purchase become void. As far as inspection goes, I always want to have the tenant get the inspection before moving in because uh, if they, you know, you don't want to have them get all the way to closing and then then do an inspection before closing and say, oh, I don't like the condition of the roof. I don't want to buy it. You know, they, they can't back out of the, the, the deal and get their money back because of an inspection um, before closing. They want to, you want, that's because you want to have their, get their inspection before they move in. As far as getting paid, uh, I want to have the tenant pay rent separately from their option money. So if the payment is $1,300 a month and I'm going to have $300 of that, going towards a, a, a purchase deposit, a thousand towards rent. I want them separate checks because in the future you're gonna um, have to show the lender how much money was actually supposed to go towards the purchase and this just kind of helps clarify things and that extra money you don't have to put into an escrow account. You can actually go and just spend it because it at closing it's just going to show as uh, accumulated purchase deposit that's accounted for on the HUD. So I'm really getting up to my 10 minutes here. If you've got other questions, let me know. I'm going to try to answer them in the future. And if you actually have a property that you're interested in selling with a lease purchase, just call them and pick my brain. I'd be happy to answer questions you have. So there's my phone number, or you can also email me. And uh, we'll look forward to getting the next video out pretty soon. We'll talk to you later.